too stifled, you can take off your mask for a few minutes while we uh, go to the word of God and pray that it's proclaimed faithfully this morning. Now, most of you can probably think of a moment in your lives when you had such a sense of suffering and fear and woe that all seemed lost. For me, I have a vivid memory of being in an old Soviet-era airplane flying from Baku, Azerbaijan, to Tashkent, Uzbekistan, and I was so overwhelmed by fear and woe and suffering that I did not see a way through it all. I was horribly sick. I was on my fourth week of a terrible bout with Giardia. I hadn't seen a soul that I knew for well over two months. I was supposed to be met at the airport in Tashkent by some friends of friends, some missionaries that were working there, but I didn't know any of those people. I couldn't have picked them out of a crowd to save my life. And so I sat on that old rickety airplane and I felt utterly alone, completely scared, and totally overwhelmed. And the words that I muttered under my breath, shaking with fever and aware that not even my mama knew where I was right then, were Paul's words of encouragement from Romans. I am convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. For many of us, this morning's lesson from Romans stands as one of our very favorite passages of scripture. Paul has been building momentum throughout his letter to the Romans, recounting the saving acts of God in history, and he reaches this joyous crescendo right here at the end of chapter eight. And if these are not words that you know by heart, I commend them to you, memorize them, engrave them on the front of your mind, because in these words lies a hope that defies all of the sorrows and miseries of this sinful and broken world. I think one of the things that resonates with us so much in Paul's shout of triumph is how realistic it is. There's nothing in Paul's words that seeks to sugarcoat the suffering that we experience in this world. Paul is not pretending that Christians are somehow protected from the brokenness and pain of sin and death. To highlight this, Paul quotes Psalm 44. For your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. These words of lament are some of the most powerfully sad words in all of the Old Testament. Allow me to paraphrase some of Psalm 44, which Paul's readers and hearers would have known by heart. The moment he said that verse, they would have been thinking of all the context of Psalm 44. I want to give you a sense of how brutally truthful Psalm 44 is regarding the human condition and our desperate need hour by hour for God's help in times of trouble. We have heard with our ears, O oh God, our fathers told us what you did in days of old. You saved us from our enemies and you put shame on those who hated us. But right now, we don't see you. Where are you? You're letting us be eaten up like sheep. You're making us a mockery among the nations. And for your sake, we're killed all the day long. We're counted as sheep to be slain. Rise up. O oh Lord, awake and help us and deliver us for your mercy's sake. Psalm 44 is a lament to God, and it came at a time in Israel's life when they weren't being rebellious. It's a rare moment, I know, in the Old Testament, but Israel was being faithful to their covenant promises. They weren't going after other idols. They were being true to what God had called them to, and yet... They still looked around them and realized the world was crumbling around them. Everything was a total stinking mess. And so for Paul to quote Psalm 44 during this moment of joy, this, this crescendo of joy in Romans chapter 8, means that Paul is not hiding the ball. Paul is saying that even in the darkest of our moments, Christ has changed everything for the human condition, making it possible for us to be confident in God's goodness. Christ comes to us in our suffering, 
giving us God's answer to our deepest laments and our deepest fears. Christ stands with us. He is this ultimate sign that God has not abandoned us in our woe, but rather given us hope because he comes to us in our time of need. Surely we all need to hear this word of hope right now. If you think about today's words from Romans, do you feel like tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, and sword? They're just the order of the day. I mean, Paul could have been reading the front page of the New York Times to us this morning. Yet, Paul is still full of joy and full of hope. For again, the complaints of Psalm 44 have been answered by God in Christ. Where is God in our suffering? He's with us. He's beside us. He's undergirding us. He's pushing us on by the power of his cross and his resurrection. God has stepped into human suffering and shared with us our deepest moments of misery. He has redeemed our suffering with the blood of Jesus, the lamb who was slain. And if God is like this, if God is the one who doesn't snap his fingers and make the world disappear when sin comes about, but rather works in it and through it and, and, and gets down in the muck and mire of it with us, then we can be with Paul, those who speak words of boldness and joy to say that if God is willing to come all the way down from heaven, to be with us in our suffering, then nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ. Death cannot separate us from God. The things of this life cannot separate us from God. Angels and political rulers cannot separate us from God. Our past failures and our future sorrows, they cannot separate us from God. The powers of hell cannot separate us from God. He is here with us through it all, and he beckons us to persevere until we have run the race that is set before us, when our reward at the end of that race will be an eternity in his redeeming presence. Amen? Amen. Let me close by framing all of this with a question. What does it mean for us to be more than conquerors through him who loved us? I think it means this, if we use human eyes, then we think of a conqueror as someone who has defeated a problem. But to be more than a conqueror is to be like Jesus, who was willing to trust his father all the way to the cross. A conqueror, I just got stung by something. In this broken world, this is my suffering moment right now. A conqueror in this broken world is one who is so confident in the mercy and compassion of God that we remain hopeful and steadfast even when life is lonely and full of discouragement. The same God who looked on the crowds at our gospel lesson and had compassion on them. The same God who saw their hunger and broke the bread and the fish, who fed them until there were 12 baskets left over. He loves you. And he loves me. And he has been faithful in the past. He's faithful today. And he'll carry us through to the end. That's the truth. That combats the lie that we feel like we've been abandoned. We have not been abandoned. We are loved by the God who is love. And confident in that love, we can be more than conquerors. We've not been defeated. For God has done more for us than we could have ever asked or imagined. He shares in our sufferings. And he invites us to share in his glory. The great A.W. Tozier once wrote these words. If we remember that divine mercy is not a temporary mood, but an eternal attribute of God, then we will no longer fear that it will one day cease to be. God's mercy never began to be, but rather from eternity was. So we will never cease. Nothing that has occurred or will occur in heaven or earth or hell can change the tender mercies of our God. Forever his mercy stands, boundless, overwhelming, an immensity of divine compassion. I'm glad I'm not in that Soviet plane right now, shivering with fever, lonely and scared, but 
I know I will feel something like that again. And you will as well. Those emotions are part of the human condition. We're all going to have illness, deaths of loved ones, loss of jobs, broken relationships. But in all of those things, I am and you are more than a conqueror through the God who loved me and you enough to win for us the victory over all human woe. And that victory comes from knowing that nothing can separate us from his love, both in this life and the life that is to come.